Hi, my name is Drew and I'm going to be walking you through the 1475 today. Uh, starting right up front here, we do have your smart jack. Uh, this has a few features that differentiates it from a traditional electric power jack, uh, such as uh, recalling hitch height memory and an auto retract feature. Uh, setting both of those features up are going to be outlined here on the sticker on the side of the jack. So. Uh, when you get it to the place that you're going to be storing the, the unit, uh, just follow those instructions for setting up that and utilizing that uh, hitch height recall. Uh, other than that, it is going to function uh, very much like any uh, traditional electric tongue jack. Uh, you do have a light uh, on the underside, uh, which gives you a point of reference if you're backing up to it in the dark. Other than that, you are going to have up or down operation on the jack itself. Uh, in the event of a power loss situation, you do have a three quarter inch drive nut there on the top. You will go ahead and utilize the uh, manual crank handle there uh, again in the event that you would need to manually operate that up or down. Now that three quarter inch drive nut is going to be a common thread throughout the camper. Uh, your lug nuts are three quarter inch drive. The gravity feed for the spare tire is three quarter inch drive. Uh, so you will have this crank handle as well as a three quarter inch lug wrench uh, to maintain the and aid in changing any, any tires or anything like that. Uh, coming back behind the jack, we do have a 20 pound propane tank. It is full for you today. Uh, open and close valve on the top. It is held there true to the unit uh, with a tension band here. So just loosen that tension band, undo the pigtail here you can go ahead and pull that out for refilling purposes. Uh, directly behind that, uh, we do have a brand new interstate deep cycle battery. Uh, biggest thing with this is gonna be just good general battery maintenance. Uh, what that entails is two or three times a year, you're gonna pull these vent panels up, refill with distilled water as necessary. Uh, pay special attention to this 12 volt fuse holder uh, there. Uh, that is going to be power for the jack and you may find yourself having to replace that from time to time. Uh, coming around here to this side, uh, we have a sewage hose storage compartment here. Uh, does have a door, is, do, does run the full width of the camper and is accessible from each side. And again, that is just to store your sewage hose uh, so you're not having to carry it with the rest of your gear. Uh, in the compartment here, uh, we do have a battery disconnect switch. Uh, you'll use that for periods of long-term storage uh, for your battery. Uh, what this is going to do is isolate that battery, uh, keep any nominal or phantom draws off of that system, keep that battery in tip-top shape, and again, anytime you are storing the unit, just go ahead and disconnect uh, that switch there. And you can remove the key when you are disconnected. When you are connected, it is locked in there. Uh, also in this compartment, we have a switch here. This black switch is going to control the lighting on either side of the tongue uh, up front on the camper. And then we also have a tap light here to light this compartment itself. Uh, down here, we have your stabilizer jacks. Uh, those are for stabilization. Um, they are not for leveling. So anytime you are leveling the camper front to back, you're going to use the main tongue jack up front. Left or right, you'll use the tires on what's called a leveling kit. So I would get in the habit of using kind of a light touch when it comes to these stabilizer jacks. There is no real need to over tighten them. So once you are certain of your level in both directions, you're then going to uh, put this crank handle over that spline, uh, come down, make contact with the pavement, maybe a quarter turn more just to shore up the floor. Uh, same thing on the way up. Again, no need to go overly tight in either direction. Uh, at the rear of this compartment, we are going to see your three quarter inch lug wrench. Uh, of course, use that uh, to change any tires. Uh, it's an excellent, excellent thing to keep with the unit. Uh, a little further down, we have your potable water uh, tank there. That is going to be how you fill the onboard water tank. Uh, you would use this tank for uh, any boondocking off-grid scenarios, uh, very simply just stick a garden hose directly in there, fill it up to it overflows. Uh, once it does overflow, you uh, are full, of course, you do need to use that onboard water pump to draw that 
uh, water from the tank and up to the fixtures to make it usable. Uh, we will get to this, the location of that switch uh, further on. Uh, lug nuts, tire pressure. Uh, these lug nuts are going to uh, be torqued at 100 foot-pounds. Uh, it is very important uh, that you maintain that torque throughout your ownership of the camper. There is a, there is a retorque procedure. It's going to be the first 10, 25, 50, and 100 miles of initial travel. Uh, manufacturer wants you to retorque those down to 100 foot-pounds as those wheels break in. Uh, it is important to, again, maintain that torque. Uh, from there on after, at the start of each trip, uh, you will check and make sure they are maintaining that 100 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, the tire pressure uh, on this unit is, is 65 PSI. That is the max tire pressure rating uh, stamped uh, on the sidewall of the tire as well as on the data tag sticker forward on the camper. So you'll find that 65 PSI uh, on that tag as well. A little further down the camper, uh, we have cable satellite inlets here. Uh, these are standard RG6 cable fittings. Uh, they are just a pass-through connection. Uh, some higher-end campgrounds will provide a park cable service. Uh, again, this would be the inlet of either a park cable service or an aftermarket satellite package. The termination is going to be at the designated TV area of the camper. Uh, below that, we have your 30 amp, 110 volt power supply. It does only plug into the unit one way. So as you see, it is only going to be accommodated one way. Uh, once you plug it in, it will be an eighth inch turn to the right that locks it in. Then we do have a secondary collar to screw and lock it in further. Now this is your power cord, does come with the unit. It is 30 feet in length. Um, we, below that, we have your city water connection here. Um, water pressure is very important when we are talking about city water. Um, we include a water pressure regulator that is gonna keep that water pressure regulated in between 40 and 50 PSI. Uh, if you were inclined to, to want higher water pressure, feel free to increase that uh, at up to 75 PSI with either an adjustable water pressure regulator or a high flow uh, water pressure regulator again. Uh, this, is, this water pressure regulator is going to screw directly onto the water source, so right there onto the spigot, and then your drinking water hose is going to hook onto that. And then, of course, you connect to the trailer by rotating this trailer connection here. Right beside that, we have your black tank flush. Uh, that corresponds with a jet inside the black water tank, specifically designed to help blast off compounded toilet waste, body waste, things like that. It is an excellent thing to have, but there is um, some things you want to remember. So there is no check valve in that tank to keep your waste and your, and your water, especially when flushing it uh, down in the tank. So the path of least resistance is going to be the rooftop septic vents. Uh, and I, trust me, you want to avoid that. So what I recommend most of my customers to do uh, is if they're by themselves, uh, don't allow water to run into the tank for more than five minutes before coming down here and relieving the pressure of the black water valve. If you have the luxury of having somebody there with you, uh, while you're flushing it out here, they can be watching the monitor panel on the inside, watching as that tank fills up. Uh, once you are confident of its level, you can then come down here and, and empty it that way. So very, very important to stay uh, aware when you are utilizing that black tank flush. Um, down here, on the dump valves, we got kind of a lot going on. Uh, we have your, your handles here. These are going to be for, dri for dumping your wastewater tanks. You have gray for gray water, black for black water. Uh, these valves should never be opened at the same time. Uh, and black water is going to spend 90% of its life in the closed position. Uh, it is very important for that solid body waste of the black water tank to maintain a, or to, to stay as wet or flowing as it can. So the more water is better. 
Um, these two, again, should never be open at the same time. It is a popular option to dump your black water and then rinse with your gray water. Uh, down here is going to be a standard bayonet style fitting. Your, your sewage hose is gonna connect the very same way that cap comes off. So you'll see four prongs around the outside. You put your sewage hose there in the halfway position, give it a quarter inch turn, it's gonna go ahead and lock it on there. Again, even when you are hooked up to full-time septic, you are only gonna dump this black water tank as necessary. Uh, also, transitioning here at that same location are going to be your low point drains. These are the lowest point in the unit's plumbing. Everything in between water source and fixture is gonna be drained via these two ports here. Uh, manufacturer recommends anytime the unit is gonna be in storage for more than seven days that you go ahead and evacuate all the water from the system. Number one is going to be uh, the fresh water tank, if it's been in use, we kind of missed that valve there. It was hiding from us, but that's going to be that white handled valve there. And it goes without saying that all of these valves, the, the, the white fresh water valve handle there, your gray, gray water handle, and your black, black water handle, they all open with a six inch pull towards you. So whenever you're trying to open them, it is just going to be a six inch pull towards you. Uh, so, uh, manufacturer recommends that any time the unit is going to be in storage for more than seven days that we do go ahead and purge the water from the system. Number one is going to be the white handle up front. Uh, that's going to dump that fresh water tank if it's been in use. Number two is going to be coming here and doing the low point drains. These do just have a couple plugs on each line. Uh, you can generally do that without the use of any tools. And last but not least, you are going to want to drain the boiler system separately or the Truma system separate of these other lines. Uh, we will get on how to do that a little further in this presentation. Um, coming back up here, uh, we do have your outside shower, access to hot and cold water. Sprayer does have a hard on off there on the fixture. What I've seen is that since people don't constantly see water uh, coming from here at all times, they may forget that they have these valves on. Uh, by design, this feeds up there into the inside cabinetry. And as you can see, if it's not positioned properly, it will turn on when you shut the door. So just keep in mind that you do truly have the water off before uh, feeding that in and closing it. Coming around here to the backside of the camper, uh, nothing too terribly much to speak of. Um, we have, of course, the rear view camera, tail lights, license plate, uh, license plate bracket and license plate, uh, and we have the rear of your fridge. So it is very important uh, that we do keep any mud daubers or flying insects from nesting in this refrigerator cavity. Uh, easiest way to do that is, of course, with the aid of some bug screening material. Uh, other than that, uh, take these vents off a couple times a year, make sure nothing's gotten in, make sure nothing's nesting in there, uh, give it a visual inspection, make sure all these wires and connections still look good. Uh, when it comes to putting this on, uh, you're going to go ahead and line the tabs up first. Go ahead and put the square holes in, uh, give them a slight rotation there and that's gonna go ahead and lock it on. So, uh, again, you should be visually inspecting that a couple times a year, make sure nothing's gotten in. Uh, here on this side, we have your Truma vent here. Uh, just is very important not to restrict the flow of that. That is the vent for the boiler system of the unit. So make sure that is free and clear and able to breathe. And then we have a a uh, little mount here for the Bluetooth speaker there on the inside so you can come out here and, and mount it here on the outside. It's a very nice feature. Uh, standard RV style handrail, which would be up and out, uh, locks in either one of those positions. Step is going to be up and in. So again, very straightforward. One thing to speak of is not only going to be the slide out maintenance of the unit, but the overall general maintenance of the unit. So starting with the slide out, uh, every 90 days you are going to want to lubricate these tracks and treat these seals with seal conditioner. 
So you have these tracks, top and bottom, left and right of the slide. You're going to, going to want to spray those down with a dry silicone lubricant. So spray those there on the track, up and down. Run the slide in two or three times to distribute that lubri lubricant and you'll be good. Uh, on the seals here, you're going to want to use a seal conditioner product. It, we want to keep that rubber uh, as supple as we can. Uh, so spray it down, let that again soak in for uh, an extended amount of time, and then run the slide in and out and you'll be good. Uh, this slide does have seals inside and out because it does seal in both directions. So it is important to treat both sets of seals. Uh, further maintenance, uh, for further structural maintenance is going to be maintaining the sealants uh, anywhere where two pieces come together. So on the rooftop, you're going to find a di you're going to use a different sealant than you would here on the body. Anything you're going to use here on the body is going to be a 100% silicone product. Um, make sure the color matches and 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 apply that like you would uh, again any other tube silicone. Uh, everything that you find up there on the roof is going to be an RV grade self-leveling lap sealant. Uh, generally, you will have to source that from an RV dealer. Um, or parts department, something like that. And again, uh, what you're looking for is any degradation in your seals, uh, any cracking, any drying, anything like that. And again, our goal is to inspect those every 90 days so we can catch them uh, as soon as they fail, essentially. So. Uh, we have a outside TV area here. The idea is that you would mount this onto a secondary TV that you would carry with the unit. Uh, so this mounts on. Uh, when you're applying this, you're going to always start with the top uh, on first. And then when I push this button, that allows that to swing out of the way and then slip onto the bottom of that mount. Uh, of course, again, it goes without saying, this TV is only supposed to be attached when the unit is stationary you would remove the TV and mount before going down the road, hopefully. Um, down below here, we have the power for the television. So we have a 110 standard 15, out, 15 amp outlet there, uh, if you choose to use a 110 volt TV. And then we have uh, a 12 volt cigarette lighter style receptacle, receptacle. Again, if you decide to use a 12 volt TV, a couple USBs for charging. And then we have a park cable service. Uh, so what we saw on the other side was the inlet of that park cable service. This would be the outlet of that service in the event that you want to use this for a outside TV area. Um, forward compartment here, uh, you do have this removable tray. It uh, is locked in to a certain extent. Uh, to pull it out further, you would have to remove this bar pin there. Uh, say you go to the, the beach or something, it's filled with sand, you can pull it out, uh, wash it off. Anytime you have it stowed with gear and going down the road, you need to use this bar latch and go ahead and lock that in. Make sure your gear is not slamming against your door here. Uh, other than that, uh, down low here, we do have a high flow propane uh, line there. This is a quick disconnect coupler. So we slide the locking collar back, we insert the male end fully. Uh, and then we turn this valve into the on position. Now that, now that is going to accommodate any high flow propane appliance with the male end of a quick connect fitting there. So gas grill, propane heater, propane fire pit, any of those appliances would work well with this uh, high flow propane line. And again, it uses your onboard propane supply to feed a auxiliary appliance. And then we again have that same tap light we saw on the other side up here. Again, works just like the other side. We have the other side of your propane door. Again, very much the same as we saw on the other side. And last but not least, we do have your portable solar connection. Uh, now that connection there is designed to work with a portable solar panel. Uh, most of those portable solar panels, those briefcase style folding panels, they have their ch solar charge controller built right into the panel. Uh, what that means for you is that, again, this is just a direct connection to the battery. All you have to do is essentially plug and play the solar panel into that port and it will start charging your battery and maintaining your battery. 
So that's just about covers it here on the outside. Uh, we're going to step there onto the inside and start going over that. So here we have the Truma system. Um, this is the, the internal view of this. Uh, the reason why we're showing you this is this is going to go in that general unit maintenance category. This is going to be the last thing that you do need to drain to uh, purge all that water from the system. So when it does come to draining this, uh, you would have already drained your freshwater tank. You would have already drained your low point drains. This is going to be your last stop uh, in that process. Uh, now when we look at this, we do have a valve right here uh, that does transition through the floor and we want to go ahead and open that up when we are draining it. Uh, Maybe a little hard to see, but directly behind that valve, we have what is called an automatic pressure relief valve. Uh, that is a secondary safety feature. It is designed to automatically relieve the pressure if it gains to an unsafe uh, level inside the unit. Yeah. Now, what you would do in this scenario is you're going to automatically uh, open that up. And it's just a yellow tab on the top of the valve. You just flick that into the horizontal position and that's going to allow between this valve and that secondary valve, all of the water inside the Truma would be evacuated. Now in the event that you are doing a full winterization process, which is going to be kind of the second part of that discussion, of course, before you do any sort of winterization, you are going to do all of the steps we just discussed. Before introducing an RV grade, RV grade antifreeze into the system, you do want to bypass this Truma uh, boiler system. So the way to do that is, of course, they give you a little reminder tag there. Uh, but if you go directly behind that, there's a valve. Uh, and if you put that valve in the up position, then you will uh, effectively be creating a loop in the system and the inlet and the outlet of the water heater uh, will be bypassed. From there, you would, go, you would go ahead and use the line coming off the water pump uh, as a vacuum port to again introduce antifreeze into the system. So also while we're down here, on this side of things, we have your fire extinguisher. Uh, it is very important to test not only your fire extinguisher, but all of your safety equipment every time you plan on taking the unit out. To do so, you go ahead and you push that green tab down. If it springs back, there's still pressure in the unit. If it, if it stays depressed, then you do need to replace the unit. Uh, on the inside of the unit here, uh, starting with the slide out, uh, you have slide out in and out switch here. You need to hold that switch all the way in, all the way out to avoid short bursts. What we have here is the Schwintech system. It is two independently geared motors. If you apt to run those in short bursts or not go fully in or out, it can actually bind the slide in its opening. So it is very important. Now this system does have an electric brake in place. So just hold the slide button until the slide stops uh, and then you do know it is fully in. Uh, refrigerator is here. Um, of course, you'll come to it. It'll be in the off position. We'll go ahead and we'll turn it on. It, once it boots up, it's going to go into the last saved setting, uh, which in this case was AC voltage. Now to switch in between the modes, we use that little square. Uh, and the modes of operation are going to be the A plus the plug. That means we're in the auto. Uh, in auto, it defaults to AC voltage first. If AC voltage is not available, it's going to automatically start lighting on gas. That seems to be the most popular option there. Uh, next after that is just going to be AC voltage. If I were to go interrupt power to the refrigerator, it is not going to have that automatic gas switch over. Now this 12 volt side, so ammonia absorption systems in general are, are known to be pretty inefficient on 12 volt power. They generally do not work very well. Uh, it's more or less our opinion as a dealership uh, that you're probably not gonna be satisfied with the operation of this on 12 volt uh, and, and probably for the most part be best not to use it. Now, the manufacturer uh, Lance is of course aware of the limitations of the, the, the unit on 12 volt. 
So they do not want you to inadvertently turn this in, turn this on on 12 volt and zap down your battery bank to nothing in, in you know, the matter of 20 minutes. So what they did is they gave you a redundant switch up here. So to turn this on on 12 volt, you first have to make sure that that switch is on. And then once we see that, the, dis the display stops blinking and it is now running off of 12 volt. Now that's a good indicator that blinking is, that's what you're gonna see. You'll see that display blinking if you have any other, you know, if, you, if it fails to light on gas, it's gonna be blinking like that. If you, if you lose power, it's gonna be blinking like that. Um, so if it is blinking, something has happened, something is wrong. Uh, next up on this display, and we'll get here into a workable mode, this is gonna be your temperature control. The more bars you see, the colder it is on the inside. This next square is what they call a, a seal defroster. Uh, what that controls is essentially there's a heat strip here in this seal. What is it doing is it's preventing any ice crystals from forming on this seal so that every time you close the door, you get a nice tight seal and it's gonna keep the, the coolness in. So, pretty straightforward stuff there. Uh, dipping in here into the bathroom. Uh, we have a standard RV style exhaust fan uh, switch is going to be right there on the actual fan. Uh, and you do need to make sure that you remember to close these fans down before going down the road. Make sure that's nice and closed. Toilet operation will be a light pull of the handle to feed water to the toilet. It'll be a full pull to flush the toilet. Uh, always a good idea to keep some water in the toilet. That's going to help keep the bad smells down. Shower uh, does have this slide sliding shower curtain uh, with a little magnetic rail there that's going to keep it secure. Uh, also on the shower head, you will find an on off switch. Uh, they do that to help conserve or help you conserve your, your water usage. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing too crazy in here. We have your uh, medicine cabinet, your fixtures, things like that. Uh, two light switches, one for the vanity and one for the ceiling light. Coming back over here to the door. Uh, we have, uh, first up here on this light switch display, we have your patio light. Uh, now that is a three-way light. So one direction is going to be a bright white LED light. That middle position is going to be off. And then the other position is going to be a less intrusive amber colored bug light. Uh, next to that, we have your awning lights. Uh, since we can't see that awning light uh, when the awning is in, they give you a lighted switch uh, to make sure you don't go ahead and turn that on inadvertently. Uh, courtesy light is just a light that you, a, a familiar switch you can hit when you come in the door uh, when it is dark to go ahead and light uh, the area. Now this unit is equipped with a carefree one touch awning uh, equipped with wind protection. So to use that awning, uh, number, one, both, number one, the door does need to be closed. Uh, so you would, so you would turn that awning switch on, and you would hit, hit the switch in the direction you're trying to go, and you would hit that only one time. Now, if you are, if you're running the awning out, and something pops out in front of you, hit the direct, hit the awning in the direction you are going to stop it. Uh, that's going to freeze it, in, freeze it in its tracks. From there, you can hit either retract. Or once that area is clear, the coast is clear, you can go ahead and follow that direction. It is equipped again with wind protection. Uh, not necessarily something I would bet my lunch on, although it does work very well. Uh, for that wind protection to be in effect, this main awning switch does need to be in the on position. Uh, you have a jackknife style sofa here with recliners. Uh, these recliners are very nice addition they do lock in that out position so for those to come back in we do need to push from the outside if you push down they're going to be locked you need to push from the ins from the outside in 
Uh, and again, this is a jackknife sofa. If we were gonna go ahead and fold that out, we're gonna get rid of this lagoon table mount for now. You would lift from the bottom. That's going to allow that to lay down. Again, a secondary sleeping area, which is nice. And up on the way up, you may have to help it from the rear. And it sits nicely. All of the windows in the unit are going to operate the same. They will all have these little levers that you need to open. From there, you can go ahead and open it. And you have a little strut on each side. If you tighten those up, that window is going to stay open in that position. From that position, you can go ahead and pull the screen down. It's going to keep any bugs out, anything like that. Uh, if you want some privacy, it's going to be that white one there. So, uh, on the way in, you have a couple options here. Again, if you are stationary, these windows do have a vent option. If you put them in this middle channel here, it's going to give you a fingertips worth of opening. Again, to help with any kind of condensation issues or anything like that. Um, that'll work well for that. Uh, of course, again, that is only designed when you are stationary. When you're going down the road, you're going to pull those back all the way closed. Every window in the unit is going to operate that same way. Uh, coming over here to this side of the kitchen, we have your convenience center. This is going to give you a real-time readout of where your tanks sit. Uh, on the left side of those, those green lights, you see voltage readings, and that's going to correspond with the battery button here. On the right side, we have the level of full on your tanks, which is empty, one-third, two-thirds full. Those are going to correspond with your tanks. So what we're seeing here is the battery's full, fresh water's full, black water's empty, gray water's empty. Battery will read full anytime you are plugged into shore power. So to get a true readout of your battery, you do need to unplug from shore power and go ahead and, and push that button there. We have your water pump switch here. If that red light's on, your water pump is on. Uh, for today's demonstration, that's how we are running the unit off of the water pump. And below that, we have a couple light switches. Uh, soffit lights are going to be the lights above my head. Sink lights are going to be the backlighting of this cabinet here. Uh, so you have this backlighting here, which corresponds with that switch. And then we have this lighting here that corresponds when we open the door. We have a light and a fan here on the hood, uh, standard equipment there. Uh, we also have uh, your standard kind of RV style cooktop, has that glass folding top. You'd fold that out of the way. Uh, then we uh, would turn the gas on here and we're going to rotate that sparker uh, clockwise to go ahead and light that burner. So we can go ahead and do that for all three of them there. Uh, now the oven, you're going to light slightly different, um, and you're going to light this more like a traditional pilot. So you turn this to pilot, and you will need to hold this in while in, po in pilot to get that flow of propane. Uh, once, I, once I'm doing that, I need to get a long stem barbecue lighter, and I need to put my flame in between these two prongs here. So you have two prongs there. Um, and you just put your flame in between the two. Uh, while holding that pilot light in, uh, once you see that flame, give it a few seconds longer to heat up that thermal coupler and it will, um, of course, stay lit from there. So down low here on the floor, we have your carbon monoxide LP leak detector. Now that is wired into the 12 volt section of the camper. Uh, there is no battery to change, uh, nothing like that. It does indicate which one of those uh, gases it is sensing by the uh, lights there on the front. And it is, again, very important to test your safety equipment every single time you take the unit out. To the right of that, we have your 
fuse panel breaker box. Uh, on the right of that display, we have your uh, 110 volt light switch style breakers. Uh, and then on the left of that display, or left of that panel, we have your automotive blade style fuses. Not a bad idea to pick up a variety pack of fuses to keep with the unit in the event that one of those were to burn out. The function of each one of those breakers and fuses is labeled on the door of that breaker box. This GFI outlet here is your main reset point for the unit. So all the receptacles are on the same circuit. This is going to be the reset point. So if you plug into a receptacle and it's not working, that means that this has probably been tripped and you would just push that red button there to reset it. So keep that in mind as well. Under the sink here, we're going to find access to your water pump. Uh, this was referenced earlier in the presentation is you have this clear hose. Uh, now this clear hose is going to be utilized to uh, add antifreeze to the system for a full winterization process. Before doing that, it is again a reminder that you need to bypass the water heater and purge all the existing water from the line and we've already covered that. Uh, once that is done, you're going to stick this into a bottle of RV grade antifreeze and we're going to turn on the water pump and then we are going to walk around the unit and we're going to turn each fixture on independently and we're going to wait until we see that antifreeze come from the faucet once it does we are we do know that we are fully winterized uh, we let it run for a few seconds after that that way we can fill these p-traps with water on the way out or excuse me with antifreeze on the way out Hopping up here into the kitchen area, nothing too crazy, but uh, again, we do have access to water here uh, with different sprays there on the fixture. Uh, you do have the pull down nozzle as well. Uh, TV, 12 volt TV uh, works great. You do have a over the air digital TV antenna here. Uh, you can go ahead, works really well. You can go ahead and directionalize that here. So you have, this gets its power by a little switch here that, that is right behind the TV. So um, on off there, that turns this on. Now you can also see there is a on off switch here on the antenna itself that just is controlling these lights. So if you were sleeping here in the bed, you probably would find these lights uh, very intrusive in the middle of the night. So you may turn those off, but that is not cutting power to the antenna. So what we're looking to do ideally is we are going to turn this antenna. And again, this antenna is always up. There's no travel position. What I'm doing is rotating it 359 degrees and then it stops and then I rotate it the other 359 degrees the other way. Uh, what I'm looking for is the most blue lights here. Once I find the position that gives me the most blue lights, I will then do a channel search and it's gonna, it's gonna give me the best signal. Other than that, um, you know, again, is a 12 volt TV. Uh, does have HDMI arc capability uh, with the stereo here. So this is your CD, DVD, AM, FM radio, Bluetooth. All of those features can be utilized through this head unit here. Uh, referencing that HDMI capability, we would turn it on here on the actual head unit itself. Uh, then if we had some time, we'd wait, it'd kick on the TV, everything would be paired. From there on out, any over-the-air digital TV that we are watching on the TV is going to broadcast through the speakers, uh, kind of like a surround sound kind of um, action. And as you can see, it's trying to do that, and we're going to stop that from happening. So I'm going to strip that off. Uh, other functions of this, again, is, is very straightforward. Uh, AM, FM, radio, Bluetooth, CD, DVD. This unit itself does have its own separate service manual. 
Uh, if you have any questions on running through the controls of that, uh, please feel free to uh, give, us a, a give us a call if, if you can't figure it out from reading that. Um, starting here on the left side, uh, this big square box here, this is going to be your Truma uh, display. So this is how you are going to control your heat uh, as well as your uh, water heater. So there's only really, there's very few buttons on this. So this, this volume knob looking thing, that's going to be how you move from selection to selection. And then to confirm that selection, you push that button in. Uh, and then the only other button is a back button. So we, so we wake it up, it's gonna show us the time, and then we hit it again. That's gonna take us into the displays. Uh, first one up is going to be your thermostat or your heat option. Uh, and then once we, we confirm to get into that display, we can choose a temperature there uh, along the way. And then we confirm that. Um, so once that temperature is on, we need to choose how we are going to, uh, what what we're going to use to to get to that or to, to heat the unit. Uh, and what I'm referencing is, is either gas or electricity. So then we we skip over one selection there, and I confirm that, and that's going to take us into the sources. So our options are gas. Mix one, mix two, electric one, and electric two. Uh, now gas, that's of course pretty straightforward. Mix one and mix two is going to be a combination of both gas and electricity. And they are focusing on like a low power consumption, high power consumption. So mix one is going to be uh, gas mixed with one amp hour of electricity usage. Mix two is going to be two amp hours of electricity. Uh, and then electric one and two, very same thing, one amp hour of electricity, two amp hours of electricity. Uh, in this demonstration, we'll just go ahead and select gas. And then we also have to come one more over and select a fan speed. So we have, our, so once in that menu, we have eco, we have high, and that's it. So eco and high. Um, and we would confirm that selection. And again, that's how we're going to, to run the heat. Uh, now, to run the water heater, uh, that's going to be kind of a, a very similar motion. We would go to that second, uh, looks like a thermometer and some water. And once we're in there, we have a couple modes. We have off, we have eco, we have hot, and we have boost. Uh, most of those are pretty straightforward in the name. Uh, the boost, what that's going to do, that you're going to use that in the event that you need a lot of hot water very quickly. Uh, what that's going to do is to put all available power into heating as much water as you can as quickly as you can. So it's going to shut down all available power going to uh, maybe the heat at that point in time and put that power uh, into, again, heating as much water as you can as fast as you can. And we're just going to go through and turn all this stuff off since we're done talking about it. And that should be good. Uh, this is going to be your air conditioner thermostat here right next to that. Now these are little touch buttons here. Uh, you don't have to push hard on them. Uh, if it's not responding to your touch, just give it another try. Uh, they can be, they're known to be slightly finicky, but they do work very well. Uh, once I turn it on, I do have to choose a fan speed and we are talking about air conditioner fan speed. So my choices are low, high, and auto. Uh, whether I choose low or high, or auto, uh, if I choose either low or high, that fan, that fan, the air conditioner fan is going to stay on um, whether or not it reaches its, its base temperature, um, it will run indefinitely. So kind of to keep it right going with what I'm trying to do, I'm gonna keep it here in auto. So once I confirm that selection, that's gonna take me right into the uh, air conditioner side of things. Uh, of course, to control temperature, I come here, up or down, uh, to choose a designated temperature. Now, if I go one step further, that's going to, it's going to display furnace on here. Now, keep in mind, this is a generic thermostat. They use this on, on multiple different units uh, that have gas burning furnaces. So this unit itself does not have a gas burning furnace. 
that is a null and void option. So the only thing you are going to be controlling on this air on this thermostat is the air conditioner. So we'll turn that off. Uh, nine volt smoke alarm here, uh, just like at home, it'll let you know when it needs to be changed. And then we have your uh, fan up here above my head. Now this is controlled with a remote. And we'll see if I can locate that remote in here. So here's the remote. So we turn this on with that center top button. From there, we can either choose speed or temperature or both. So um, this of course goes down at 15% uh, increments there uh, to control that speed. Or you can set a thermostat. So that means it's going to uh, keep a certain degree and kick on and off to maintain that temperature. Uh, we can go, we can on, we can switch directions on the fly if we would rather bring air from the inside than exhaust. And then we have up or down there to close the lid. So very nice feature there. Um, other than that, uh, we have your reading lights here. Uh, these are little touch um, buttons as well. Uh, they have that blue light. Uh, and then if you hit it one more time, it, it turns on bright. Uh, these Lagoon table mounts are pretty endlessly positionable. Uh, each one of these position points has a little handle like this. Um, if you don't want it to move, you can lock it down. Uh, now when operating this, if you keep it like as it is now and just turn it, it's going to tighten that down. Uh, now somewhere here like on the bottom where you could only tighten it so far before you'd hit this piece of wood, you can pull that out that releases the gearing and that will allow you to get a fresh pull on that if you are tightening or loosening it and you need to, to go an extra turn. And that goes for both of them. Uh, they are both removable uh, and they do store. Now when you're storing them, uh, you can kind of minimize their footprint by releasing this here and then this guy, actually if these handles weren't this handle was on the right side. So if you reverse this handle, uh, that would allow this guy here to thread right there onto that table mount. And you could store this all as kind of one piece. Uh, that just about covers the inside and outside of the 1475. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, we can explain most of these appliances over the phone and we'd be happy to do so. Thank you very much.